What is up ninjas, my name is Semworld and today we're going to be dabbling in the world of Deep House as I teach you guys how to make selected style bass lines. Now Selected is not an artist guys, it's gonna be a wonderful YouTube channel, <laughs> sounds so gay. It's gonna be a YouTube channel, it's gonna be a YouTube channel guys that hosts a lot of deep house music from the likes of Disclosure, Gogon City, my favorite, Nora and Pure, my baby. I've been working on the sound mic in that style which is going to be coming out this month so I've been doing a lot of research as well as a lot of sound designing for it and I can feel like I can teach you guys how to get the bass lines that they have. Now they say you can either give a man a fish or a preset or you can teach him how to create them, how to catch fish and feed him for a lifetime so pretty much in today's video guys if you follow it along I am confident that you guys will be able to make selective style bass lines without any worries and you will be able to make a crap ton of that but without further ado let's just get straight into this tutorial all right guys so welcome inside of ableton live 10 and we are inside of serum where we're going to be creating the baseline now i've taken the pleasure of creating a midi with a kick and a nice clap okay so that's going to be kind of like the melody we're going to use as a placeholder you know just for whatever you guys might create now, in order to create these bass lines, guys, the first thing that we have to do is shape them. Now, most of the Deep House selected bass lines are very punchy. That instantly means that you need to lower the sustain down. Sustain controls the level as I have the note held down. Now, if we put the sustain uh, down all the way to zero, decay starts to kind of play a bigger role in the whole ADSR world that we have going on here. I'm assuming you guys know what that is. But with decay, now we control how long it takes for us to go for max value down to 0 dB, which is what the sustain is set at now. So we'll leave it around there. Okay, now from there we're going to put a filter. Most popular is going to be the low pass for subtractive synthesis. You know, we're taking away from the sot and shaping it with a filter to get what we want. So from here we're going to use envelope 1 and modulate that filter to open up. Literally we're just telling it, hey, open up. So that's going to give us like a basic saw. If you guys like the sound that you have now, I know it's the most basic sound in the world, so don't fucking comment just yet. And you guys want to use it like this. There's a lot of people that use well-processed saw bass lines like this in a deep house track with a lot of other stuff going on. Uh, if you're going to leave it like that, make sure to turn this R and off, which stands for random face. Random phase is just going to be pretty much the location of where the wavetable starts in this instance of saw. So if this is all the way up, we can easily start anywhere where this yellow P colored outcast is. So it could pretty much start here, 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 here. However, if we have the R and phase all the way down, it's always going to start where we tell it to. So you can think of that as you're a good dog owner. He listens to you. Okay, so here we're going to lower that down. And it has a different vibe. It sounds the same every single time it hits rather than not sounding the same. So this is a pretty simple but really useful tip that a lot of people need to understand why we do it. Okay, so from here you would do the standard add reverb, you know, OTT and do a couple push-ups and you're done. Uh, but let's take it further. Let's say that for some reason you want this to be stereo. Well, that's when we apply two voices. Now two voices. The moment you apply two voices, you have stereo if this arm phase is not set to zero. If you have this set to zero, you maintain that mono compatibility because both saws are starting at the same phase, same pitch, so it just collapses into mono. However, if we start to detune, we start to get that detunement back. It still sounds a bit weird, so if you don't want that, let go. Arm phase up. Now it sounds a little bit more smoother. However, we're going to lower And you got the standard stuff. Now, let's get into the real stuff, the real man stuff while you're here, the FM baseline. So, the FM baselines, guys, we're going to do the exact same thing, and we're doing it again because with practice, you just get better at this. You start to understand everything. All right, guys, so what we're going to do here is go with a sine wave. In a sine wave, as we're going to call upon the dark powers of FM synthesis. I call them dark powers because... 
All the dubstep producers use this shit. All right, so what we're going to be doing essentially, guys, is we're going to make this volume to zero on oscillator B as this is going to be the modulator and our carrier is going to be oscillator A. And you're probably going like, what the fuck are you talking about, a carrier? It just means the sound that's getting FM'd. I don't know why we have all these fancy terms for it. So we're going to FM from B, okay? And that's going to activate this guy to go into this guy. No homo. <laughs> and then we're going to increase the FM. We're going to increase that FM on it. We're going to apply that envelope here. Now, if we want to add sustain a bit, we can, because sometimes you might want to sustain the note and you want it to still go. Then and it's all about that decay, guys. If you really want a bass line and you hear a bass line, get the shape of it. Stereo, remember the first sound, plus two. Now you can kind of see that when we use the stereo here, it starts to auto pan a bit. That just tends to happen, guys. So what you can do here, if you want to really create stereo, and this is my biggest tip, and this is where it gets a little advanced. We're going to go into the menu in Serum. We're going to go pretty much resample to oscillator B. That's going to resample this wavetable that we created with that FM over here. So now if we move this, there's our, wa our wavetable. Now what we're going to do now is copy oscillator B to oscillator A, and that's going to give us both, and then we're going to hard pan left and hard pan right. But this is where it gets funny because a lot of people tell you guys that to get stuff wide, and hopefully this is in 3D, um, you have to hard pan left, hard pan right. The problem with that, if I do it right now, as you're going to see, It's mono, and that's because it's the same sound. So the digital audio workstation that you're in, Ableton, FL, Swenny, The Devil's Fruit, um, Logic Pro X, Triple uh, X, it's saying, okay, these two sound the same, same frequency response and all that, so it just collapses it into mono. So if you want to kind of mess with this a bit more, what we need to do is we need to FM one of them and change the sound a bit on it. And now you get the full stereo sound there. I really have to show you guys that because a lot of you guys are doing it the other way. And when I hear your damn song, it sounds like a motherfucking helicopter, you know, is chasing me because I just stole a bag of weed. Uh, so that's kind of going to be kind of like the vibes there. The other way to do wideness as well is, and this is the last time, uh, to add a hyper. I just find that using hard left, right, and hard right pan usually sounds a lot better 80% of the time when you want to get something wide. Okay, so from here, this is where you can start to make the sound different because we're doing FM frequency modulation. We talked about the carrier and the modulator. You know, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what, what the book says these things are. As long as you recognize what it's doing to the sound or you remember what it does to the sound, you should be good. So here, what we're going to do is we can increase this pitch ratio from... 1 to 1, aka 0, 0, to 1 to 2, okay? So 1 to 2 here, 0 octave to 1 octave. What tends to happen here is since the, you know, pretty much the modulator, this guy is starting to go farther away from the frequency that the carrier is at. Again, I don't know why I'm using those terms. It starts to give you higher harmonics that are farther away from that guy. What that essentially sounds like is you start to get sounds that are still going to be bass lines in a good octave, but they start to sound higher pitch. We're going to apply a hyper to make it wide. Now add a bit of reverb to it. So it's up to you to decide as a producer what you want to do with this. The other cool thing to create these bass sounds if you want to, if you don't want, if you don't want to deal with FM, what the fuck happened there? Uh, digital, um, and then we can go with the FM. But that's how those wave tables are created. In essence there, that's going to give us that. Now let's get into the other deep house bass lines that we tend to have here. And notice how I'm not really doing much. I'm not going into the chorus yet and whatnot because creating these bass lines is very simple. It's about doing it properly and then just 
you know, processing it well and having, of course, a catchy thing. What we're going to do here now is we're going to create the notorious um, seventh, which EDX uses a lot and it's been used a lot in Deep House. All right. So to create that, all we need to do is increase one of the oscillators up by an octave and at a plus seven, which is going to give us the perfect fifth. So if you're playing a chord, it's going to be the third note you're holding down with your middle finger, most likely. <laughs> OK, so this is going to be the way it sounds like. And this is like old school house. It sounds like that damn Kanye West song, but that's that's how you create this simple like that. Okay, so we can put And you have to route the sound into this filter when you first heard it. Hell nah. But when you put that Okay, so pretty simple, right? Okay, now I want to show you guys the next trick that we can do in effects because pretty much from here we're done. I think you guys get the fact that it's super simple like that. Find good right, the right wavetable or do the right FM and that's all you need, my brothers. All right, so what we're going to do here is the chorus trick. Now, the chorus trick was made popular by EDX, I think. Um, you know what it is, show me love. Dun, 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 dun. We're also going to be making a similar bass like that in this tutorial. So what we're going to do is increase the mix. Low pass filter, eh, maybe around there. Now here it sounds pretty good. What we want to do is lower this depth back, which is going to be pretty much the modulation that is being applied with this rate. Usually it's done to the pitch. The timing of it, this is where we're going to control it. And what we're going to do is pretty much lower that feedback, lower that depth. And we want to get it just right. Let's apply an OTT, which is kind of like the lottery. Not, it doesn't work half the time. Add a sub direct out. That's going to be so it doesn't go through this fucking mess we just added there. Triangle wave on it, changing it, and now we got it. All right, guys, so the last base we're going to be making or the last layer to a base or the last pluck because a lot of you guys request this. So we know this is hip. It's in. It's crack lacking I don't know how you say cool. I'm 26, but you get the idea. So we're going to have something that plays chord and a base that's going to be at the bottom. And what I want you guys to do is layer a marimba. Okay, now the marimba is the most popular one. You can also layer a xylophone, which has a different vibe, but they're very similar. They're percussive, melodic uh, instruments, so we can use those inside of Syrah. Make sure they're in the key of C. You can find all of them on Splice, and we're going to put one-shot mode, key track on. So that's the sound. I'm sure you've heard it a lot of times already, and that's, you know, when you guys request these style of bass lines, I'm like, it's, it's a pluck layered on top of a bass, okay? So that sound you hear a lot in Selected on the top end of a song, uh, on Jai tracks, on, on a lot of tracks on there, the, the most famous ones, it's going to be this. But it's going to be layered on top of a bass. You can choose to just play it as one. Or you can choose to do plucks with them like. Add a bit of reverb to it to give it that nice. Simple like that, guys. But there's some tips I can give you. For instance, when you do chords, you can change this up. So we're in the key of, uh, I believe, what, what fucking key are we? Oh, yeah, D-sharp minor. You can do stuff where you make melody. So we can do something like we're in playing that B. So D-sharp there. And then here, just make a melody. And then... Dun, 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 dun. You know, in my head, I have a melody, so we'll go with that, man. And I, and I didn't prepare for it. And then here, make it like a response coming from down below, six level of hell. And then we hear that, you know, with that pluck that we just made by sampling a marimba. And you just.
just repeat it. But that's how we create that, guys. Marimbas. But I do want to show you guys how to make similar stuff like that. Synthesize it yourself because we're a man. Um, so we're going to use the same FM tricks that we used to make the bass line. The only difference is that we're going to run them at very high pitch ratios. So we already talked about pitch ratios. Uh, so we can go with the sine waves and then just have this one at plus four. Lower that down. We're going to FM. And then we just run it through a filter to give it that pluckiness there. You can do that there. Just that. You can lower this down to plus three. You can lower that plus, plus. And I mess with the FM as well. And it's just doing that. Yeah, the one we want is the one before that home. You can add down sample to it to give it a nice top. You can even use to use a sine wave like. And those tend to work really well. As you can see, it's just proper programming and having a good thing to go with, guys. But that is essentially how you create that. Again, remember, look up percussive melodic elements that you can sample. It could be a piano. It could be a lot of things that you can just run through the noise section of Serum. And they will each give you different results. <laughs> That one's too high up. We can lower it down plus minus 12, which is an octave. And that's the good thing about having it in C. You can just. Okay. Well, anyways, I hope you guys found this tutorial helpful. And I hope that you have fun doing these bass lines, making this style of music, guys. If you guys want to support the channel, you know that a selected sound bank is in the works. And it's coming. So save that money. Tell your parents to buy it for you. I'm just kidding, man. Don't tell your parents, guys. You know, get stuff you want for uh, Christmas. But if you want to support the channel, um, you know, and you guys like this style of music, make sure to check it out. And if you like any other sounds, by all means, guys, you're supporting a good cause which is me making a shit ton of tutorials for you guys, if that's good. Uh, but you guys have a good one, man. You guys take care. Happy Sunday. And happy Monday for those of you guys on the other sides of the world. Peace out.